You're listening to the ESO Network, your station for all things geek. Exploring the multiverse of pop culture. This is Podcast Roll. An Adam and JP show. Episode 243 of Podcast Roll brought to you by the ESO Amazon Store, available at ESOPodcast.com. That feels so official. 243 is a big, big number. It's huge, Adam. Almost one quarter of 1,000. And it's really just a made up <laughs> arbitrary number. <laughs> well, I mean, it's because we real, don't know. Real from a certain point in time. Yeah. That's all it is to it. It's real to us. We're close to what, 350 ish? Um, eh, who's counting? Yeah, I would say probably in reality. Size if, doesn't matter, right? If you're going episodes that Adam and I have done, probably around 350. I mean, size matters. Then there's your show. Oh, yeah. Then there's my right. multiple shows. Yeah, yeah. Who knows how many we actually That's have? It's a lot of hours of podcasting, that's for sure. Yeah. Have we done 10,000 a piece yet? Because if so, we're professionals. No, we're, we we're, we've perfected it. No. You don't think so? I don't think we're close to 10,000 hours. I wonder, I'm going to, off, off the air, because it'll take a while, I'm going to do a calculation on average of each show is one hour long, how many shows we've done, how many hours that would be. It's close. Are you? Yeah, and uh, I don't think it's close to ten thousand. Yeah, it's true. That's a big number. Maybe close to one thousand. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we're one tenth perfect. We're still amateurs. <laughs> uh, so apparently, the podcast craze now. Yeah. Is this podcast called S Town? Yeah, S Town is what's up from the uh, makers of Serial mm-hmm. and This American Life. Yeah. And I know you love it. Love it. I know Josh from Collection Connection loves it. Mm -hmm. Uh, My wife is listening to it. My sister-in-law is listening to it. So finally, I was like, well, I just want to see what this S-Town is all about. Yeah. And so uh, I listened to one episode, (laughs) and that is as far as I'm going. Wow. So is it you don't like the show itself? I mean... Uh, no, 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 no. Explain to me. It, it's a fine show. It's a fine, fine show. And it's fine, fine people. And apparently there's been some <laughs> kind of murder in a... Don't ruin it for a, people. A, a, ...a town in Alabama. Yeah. And uh, the serial guys are on the case. Right, yeah. And so they go to Alabama, and everyone they speak to, including the protagonist, or, or I guess the... Uh, well, I guess the protagonist of the story. Yeah. Uh, and everybody they talk to, it, it, it I, I cannot... And look... I love the South. I'm from the South. <laughs> Clearly, I sound like I'm from the South. Those colors don't run, do they? But my accent, <laughs> my accent is different than that accent. Yeah. And that accent just is like nails on a chalkboard yeah. in my ears. If it were a real person talking to me, I would think it's terrible, but I find his enduring and has some charm to it. Yeah. Like, I want to have him his, read- What's my, his name, John? Yeah, John B. McElmore. Yeah. I want to have him uh, read a, an audio book to me. I would list, I would love it. Now, there's some amazing stuff in that. Like, at, at one point in that first episode, they're in a maze of flowers. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and, and there are pictures of that online. There's too. pictures yeah. of that online. Yeah. Uh, but I, I cannot, I, I, I cannot- Listen to seven plus hours <laughs> of. <laughs> if I want to hear that, but he's a super smart listen, guy, super smart guy, and and this is a joke, like borderline genius. Let me clarify: this is a joke for yeah. anybody that I might have gone to high school with that mm-hmm. listens to this. If I want to hear rednecks complain about a hillbilly town, I just go to my class reunions. <laughs> Agreed. Yeah. Uh, again, that's just a joke. Yeah. <laughs> I kid, I kid. Kind of. But uh, yeah, it, it's like that that dullard speech pattern with the southern accent mm-hmm. where if it's a word with more than 3 syllables, they really stretch it out to show yeah. they know a word more than 3 syllables because it impresses you. Yeah. I can't I can't stand it. Well, I think that's what's to me the draw to the the show itself. The main character John B. McElmore is too smart to be in that town, but he won't and can't leave. And it kind of shows, you know, even if you're brought up in a bad spot, you can still be different from that and talk like the people and maybe have thoughts like the people, but you can still be smarter than your surroundings. Right. I think it's a cool idea. And it seems like everyone is incredibly racist there. Well, of, of course. I mean. I guess. Have you have you left the house recently? It's <laughs> 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 <Yeah. laughs> but true. I guess. Yeah. I mean, in our place here, we, we live in a pretty pretty uh, good town. We live in a very diverse community. Yeah, no, but still, you no, go down the highway, you still see uh, you still see some signs and some flags and things. And this happens. time of year, I guess it's because it's nice outside and it's warm, so mm-hmm. you feel like putting your flag on your pickup yeah. and driving around. Yeah, it's weird. I don't, I don't, I don't get it. American flags, rebel flags. Yeah. <laughs> three flags. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to buy a pickup truck. Not three flags, but flags with threes on them. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and halos. 
<laughs> the Halo, the classic Halo Three, one of my favorite flags. Uh, I'm gonna buy a pickup truck, uh-huh. and I'm gonna get a, a a flag of the United Federation of Planets. Yeah, <laughs> and I'm gonna fly that flag. There you go. Drive that around town. Em- embrace all. <laughs> uh, to give you a little behind the scenes, uh, today's episode recorded how we used to do uh, yeah. our shows. Late at night. Late at night on a, on a Thursday night. Have I told you why I couldn't record our usual time? No, you just said you couldn't be here tomorrow. <laughs> I forgot about it. Uh, I'm going camping all weekend. Oh, wow. This will be <laughs> fun like, for you. I'm excited. I've never been camping in my life. You're going to hate I it. I always wanted to. As a kid, I was in Boy Scouts for four years straight. My dad was even the scout master, den leader, whatever they're called. We never and you never went camping? Not once. Not once. He was my leader That's for two odd. years, and I had a random leader for two others. And never went. Always wanted to. And never went once. So we have a uh, we got a tent for the wedding. Uh-huh. We a nice tent we're gonna set up and have a whole. We're going to Fall Creek Falls. Gonna set oh, that's up. a nice that's a nice that's spot here. Gonna go see some waterfalls and hike it up and have yeah. fun. I think you actually will enjoy it. I, I'm excited for it. Yeah, it'll be nice. Yeah, I, I made a mistake. You think it's gonna be creepy at night? I, see, that's the problem. I watched the uh, the Blair Witch remake a few uh-huh. days ago yeah. or like last week. That was a problem. Is it a remake? Yeah. Well, I thought it was a continuation of the story. I haven't seen it. Let's yet. say both. Yeah, we'll say continuation. Okay, but it follows the same steps. Think of it like a, the Force Awakens, like the Blair Witch Awakens. Right. Yeah. What if, uh, what if, what if there's like an escapee from a uh, that would be crazy, uh, like a, a homicidal maniac. Hopefully, he has nothing from some nearby prison. Hopefully, he doesn't have a butter knife that can cut through my tent. <laughs> it stomps through the woods <laughs> while you're out there. Yeah, because I've been trying. Yeah, it's crazy. So, Adam, do you know how to make a campfire and all that good no, stuff? No, I'm just gonna douse it in gasoline. <laughs> no. Does well, your wife know how to do all yeah, this? She, yeah, she's a she's a veteran. okay. Yeah, she's been camping a lot. Okay. Apparently in, in Wisconsin, where she's from, they have two or three months tops of weather that isn't snow. Yeah. So they take a massive advantage of that, and everyone goes camping all the time. So what I've always you, wanted to. What are you going to take, like hot dogs? Yeah, we've got tons of hot dogs, yeah. Yeah. I love a hot dog. Get up early in the morning. <laughs> yeah, we have some eggs and sausage and all that. Make you a hot dog. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll see. So, I wanted to. I mean, so what kind of cooking utensils do you have? Uh, pan. We have pans. One time, so we have an old crappy pan we don't use anymore. Uh-huh. We go straight in the flame. Okay. Pan on the flame. There you go. Yeah. And, of course, the old, we got some uh, wiener rods. Yeah. Like for, the, <laughs> for the hot dogs. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> you know. I plan to eat many wieners. Uh, well, I hope you enjoy that. I'm excited, yeah. It's going to be fun but for we'll you. We leave tomorrow morning over Easter weekend. I forgot to tell you until last night. Yeah. <laughs> that you won't be here tomorrow. I was like, whoop. Uh-oh. So you're leaving and going to Fall Creek Falls. Yeah. Which is kind of, it's east of here, right? Uh, east-ish, north-ish, I think. Somewhere, I'm, I, I actually have no idea. East. I can't remember exactly where it is. Yeah, I'll, I'll tell you tomorrow. But I've seen pictures. It's two hours away, I know that. It looks really nice. Yeah, I'm excited. I hope you make it back. Yeah, me too. Take some uh, deep woods off. The question is, because we're going hiking, which I like that, do mm-hmm. I wear shorts to stay cool or pants so I don't get bitten by snakes and or ticks? Uh, I would recommend pants. I thought that too. Probably. Man. It's going to be so sweaty. Well, it's through the woods, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, pants. And there's no like, no actual showers there. So I've got to go a full 24 hours with no shower after sweating and, and camping. Uh, well, I mean, maybe, maybe you can bathe in the... Uh, I mean, they have showers bathe there. Bathe in the river. They have public showers, but look at me. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to go to public... No, I've never... You'll be the only one in there. Nah, well, you never know. You know. Hey, man. You walk into an empty bathroom, you take the urinal, and all of a sudden it's three people in there. All of a sudden, character well, number six it, from S Town shows up. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I've never taken a public shower. Have you? Yes. Really? Uh-huh. I don't plan to. Yeah. That's not a thing for me. Yeah, I've taken public shower. Really? Oh yeah, Boy Scout camp. Really? Mm-hmm. Wow. See, we never had that experience. Yeah, there, a lot of the kids would shower with their swim trunks on. Ah. Uh, yeah. Well, doesn't seem very uh, hygienic. But even as a small, that's what they would do. As a small boy, I wouldn't take my shirt off because I had, you know, some big. He don't of, take his shirt off. <laughs> I had those fat boobies. <laughs> You know how that works. But he's taking it off for you people. I had the foobs. The foobs. <laughs> I remember the first time I went to the, the beach. I was 15 years old. I go to Gulf Shores, Alabama, and I went on the beach with two two T-shirts on. Uh-huh. Didn't take it off. Two the T-shirts. Whole time? Yeah. Wow. With my normal shirt and a white undershirt beneath that. Well, so if it got wet, you couldn't see my nips. Was that hot? Very much so. Wow. But yeah, when you have the foobs, you got to cover them up. <laughs> Poor Adam. <laughs> Uh, we're going to change it up a little bit this week. Yeah, right. Uh, normally, we do our SOB OTW on Tuesday. We're actually going to do that in just a second. Uh, but I want to uh, mention that uh, the only sad part about us doing this tonight mm. instead of our typical Friday recording is that we're missing Star Wars Celebration. That's true. That is true. So we have to wait a whole week for that. Yeah. And I mean, I got so mad about that a few days ago because I know the trailer will leak on Friday afternoon. Yep. 
and I'll be in the damn woods. Yes, you will. <laughs> I'm sure they're. I'm sure they're cell service. I know, but I don't want to watch it on my phone for the first time. Well, you know, I'm like I'm you're kinda, going to. I go home and lights out and TV and you know take my pants off. Chewy, we're home. I will not be in the woods with mosquitoes on my feet watching the Star Wars trailer for the first time. I don't want to have that experience, but I have to. That's what's going to happen because <sighs> all indications are. Around midday tomorrow. It may be released before you leave. What time are you leaving? Nine in the morning. Oh, yeah. We'll, yeah. We'll be out by then. Yeah. Because they're saying noon mm. on the West Coast. Man. Which is going to be like two o'clock in two, the afternoon yeah. our time. Man, oh, man. Uh, but we did get one trailer this week. Yeah. And I loved it so much. Wow. I want to play part of it now. Please do. The Thor trailer. Now I know what you're thinking. How did this happen? Well, it's a long story. What have you brought today? Tell me. A contender. It's main event time. He's a friend from work. Oh, come on. Wow. That was, uh, oh, man, oh, man. <laughs> I'll, I'll just let you, I mean, I've watched this no less than 15 times. I mean, seriously, when it first came out, I watched it, no exaggeration, six times back to back to back to back to back to back. Six times. I love everything about this trailer. Yeah. Like I've uh, honestly, I like Thor the character more so in the the comics than the, than the movies. Yeah. I think this movie may change my mind. Even all Incredible Hulk stuff aside, it just looks. I don't. I, in the best way possible, I feel like they've taken a lot from the Guardians of the Galaxy feel and theme to it. Yes. I really like. It may be be the way the trailers cut or the music they're using, but even the way it's shot and the the way the, the colors, script, the colors, the colors the, look the Guardians the, of the, the Galaxy is kind of written. I mean, mm-hmm. I don't remember that kind of feel. In the old Thor movies, but I think this will be the best Thor by far. I mean, this is Planet Hulk. Yeah, I did. Oh, see, oh man, you I, n- you <laughs> never. If I told you, <laughs> so even when we first started doing this show, yeah, you know, you're yeah. gonna get a Thor movie one day. Yeah. that's actually Planet Hulk. That's crazy. Like I was literally jumping around, screaming like a like a small child, ah, clapping and screaming, jumping around. I jumped. Yeah, I was by myself in the house and I jumped. There's a lot to jump for. <laughs> Hulk in his armor. Yeah, Kate Blanchett. Yeah. What's unrecognizable right, as yeah. Helena. Right. And pretty I'm, hot. I'm just curious how they'll explain the Is whole that thing. weird? No, not so much, no. I mean, you're a Star Trek fan. It makes sense. I, <laughs> <laughs> You've been lusting after Borgs for 25 years now. It's good. <laughs> uh, but Asgard and Ruins. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we see we, we get a yeah. little Loki. Uh, I mean... From all indications, this would all be Loki's fault, right? You'd think so, yeah. Because he kind of hid Odin and yeah. took Odin's spot. I just wonder how they explain the Hulk process here. I, mean, I know the Planet Hulk and the World War Hulk story, but clearly that's not what's happening here. They'll have some kind of weird twist on it. I just wonder why he's there and in that, that armor. We'll see. Yeah. Regardless, well, I, that's amazing. I guess his Quinjet got uh-huh. off course. You think? That's pretty After far off. After Avengers 2? That's pretty far off course. Like, yeah. Where was he headed? I, they'll explain it. Yeah. I, I, give, I, I have hope for them. The destruction I mean, of Melnir? I mean... All fanboyism aside, compare that and the the feelings you have for that compared to the Justice League trailer. I mean, really, uh, it like, is I a wanna, much better trailer. I want to like Justice League. I, it is a I much have no hate trailer. for it. I go in there with open arms, but they just spit in my face every time. Uh, and then Marvel gives me this: a nice pat on the back, a nice rub down. I mean, this looks amazing. <laughs> yeah, I think every movie should use Led Zeppelin. In their <laughs> yeah, right. Make a good song for days. Yeah. Um. So I can't wait. And we're what? We, we do three, have to wait till November. We're what, three or four weeks out from Guardians, Guardians 2. Two. Yeah. It's that time again. We're, gonna, we're about to hit the summer movie. I guess it seems like summer movie <laughs> season starts in February now. Is that what happens? Because uh, you start getting these big movies. Well, I mean, Wolverine was. That's true. Or Logan was, what, early March? Yeah, last year with Deadpool on yeah. Valentine's Day. And then uh, Batman v Superman in March. Yeah. Maybe it's just a it's just a movie season all around. No summer movie season anymore. I guess. That may mean nothing. Uh, but definitely psyched for Guardians, mm-hmm. and I can't wait to see Thor in um, in November. Yeah, at this around the same time as Justice League comes out. Right. Yeah. Thor Ragnarok and Justice League will go head to head. That's true. We'll I, be, st- I think no matter which one's better, I think Justice League will make more money. I think right. so. 
I mean, the, the characters alone have more of a, of a draw than Thor. I mean, you know, my take on this. I don't know. This. Justice League comes out first. Yeah. So it will have a big weekend. Yeah. And then, depending upon the quality of it, yeah. you'll start to see drop That's off true. or not. I mean, you know my take. You know which one I'll enjoy more, looking more forward to, but I think those characters have some more power than Thor and Hulk, sadly. I, that looks like a fantastic oh, movie. without a doubt. That looks like that could be one of my favorite movies <laughs> yeah. in the MCU, yeah. honestly. Yeah. But don't you feel like they take a, a lot from Guardians of the Galaxy? Yes. In the best way possible. Yes. Well, but it makes sense, that. though. I mean, yeah. when you think about it, as we, we build towards Infinity War, which we know will be Thanos, and we know that the Guardians characters will be there mm -hmm. it makes sense that you start to see you know the worlds have to meet somewhere yeah. you can't just shove them together and that's what mcu has been brilliant about is that is kind of you know spoon feeding you along the way to get to the to the larger story right right um so good but yeah i really so enjoyed good. that th so Thor trailer yeah and i know this time next week we'll be talking about how much we love the uh, Star Wars. Right, hopefully so. Did you see the uh, Daisy Ridley, Mark Hamill I did, yeah. uh, charity thing yeah. for Omaze? Did you go to the website? I may have entered. Oh, what did you, which one did you do exactly? The Because um, they have different levels. Like the, the one they talk about, you have to donate a lot of money <laughs> for it. Oh, I didn't do that. <laughs> okay, I got you too. I mean, like $10? Yeah. I got you. Yeah. Wait, so I'm not entered? No, did you, so the tiers, if you see what those tiers are about, those numbers there, the dollar signs? Yeah. Those are how you enter for the big ones. You uh, have to give multiple thousands to be in the running for a. No, deal. read it I read, seriously. I read the fine print. Yeah. Oh. So you get you did ten bucks. You have like the digital badge, and that's it. Oh. <laughs> you, st you get the charity. Don't feel sad. I don't feel sad about that. But to to have a running, I forget. It's either five or fifty thousand, something crazy, to even be in the running for that Skywalker Ranch tour. You have to give that much, that many thousands, to be in that lottery. Well, that seems like uh, <laughs> it seems like I was misled yeah, by uh, <laughs> by Ray and Luke Skywalker. Yeah, I went there last night after I saw it. I'm like, ooh, I'm going to do nothing. <laughs> I'm just going to back away here. <laughs> I'm just going to give him my own terms. <laughs> yeah. uh, let's do this week's uh, SOB OTW. So uh, this is a little different this week. This is why we're doing it on our Friday show instead of our Tuesday show. This feels like Collection Connection. I'm excited. We actually uh, have a gift yeah, package. Yeah, care package. That was sent to us uh, from our buddy Brett. Mm. And so when you see what's in this thing, clearly he is the... That was a little... That was a little abrupt. A little, little, little brief there. Uh, he is clearly the SOB OTW. <laughs> now, you know what this reminds me of? What's that? Uh, when I was growing up, I would watch uh, Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. And, and my favorite part of Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood is he would walk in with a bag. Yeah. And when you would finally get to see what's in the bag. What's in the bag? And then that was ruined completely by Seven. Oh, uh, yeah, exactly. Which we may talk about when what's we talk about box? our favorite characters of the 1990s. It's very possible. So uh, so our friend Brent sent us this. Um from you know the, the Broken Token podcast, by yes, the way. Yes, exactly. Great show. Uh, so I'm going to start with this this little uh, this little <laughs> bag that was included in this that okay. is exclusively to you. Oh, wow. I'll let you read what's on there. <laughs> this is intense. It's awesome. Uh, the world-famous Kentucky Mad Ball contains a Kentucky Mad Ball. Be sure to collect them all. <laughs> this has a checklist of the, uh, the different kinds you can get. The Kentucky Thoroughbred right, K Kentucky Thoroughbred left. Uh, Kentucky Bourbon or the Adam's Ghost Kentucky version. That's what's checked on this one. Here. Right. So you want to open that up and see what's in there? Uh, do you have any idea what this is? Oh, I have no idea. It's stapled closed. I haven't, wow. I haven't looked at it. This is amazing. Yeah. It's actually like a. I'm feeling it before I open the bag up. Uh huh. It's actually. I don't know what this is. <laughs> Kentucky Madball. That's what it says. It sounds like a. It sounds like something. Either a, a position or a drink or something. Like, I mean, Brent went through a lot of work he for did. this. He did. This is impressive. Most impressive. Wow. The old Kentucky Just Mad for Ball. us. Should I look? Should I even look or just grab it just out? Just grab it. Well, I mean, hopefully it doesn't bite. Well, yeah. Oh. <laughs> so is it actually? <laughs> that is hilarious. This is a, an actual, uh, a Rawlings actual baseball. Uh -huh. uh, and it has some eyes and a face drawn on it and says boo on there. So it's an Adam's Ghost Mad Ball. This will go in the studio for sure. That is hilarious. That is hilarious. <laughs> The, that's, a, that's very impressive. That's the best thing I've ever received, I think. That is so funny. My favorite gift now, ever. Is that a team ball of any sort? I don't think so. It's an official like MLB baseball. Oh, wow. Yeah. But it has an actual face on there drawn and says boo. It's the Adams Ghost version of the Kentucky Mad Ball. Uh, there's a number of some sort on that's, it. That is amazing. 
It do, oh, oh, I bet that's his, the actual the code, the hidden yeah, code on there. That's the hidden code. I see a Batman symbol, a 000, a triangle 4, smiley face 8. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to write this in the directory online for the, the Madball codes. <laughs> I, mean, I think that's an exclusive. That is an exclusive. That's a Kentucky exclusive. That's uh, a, that is amazing. We have uh, two Broken Token stickers. Nice, nice. Uh, he asked if we were fans of bluegrass. I'm I told a, him that you and I were both I'm fans a huge of bluegrass. Fan of bluegrass yeah. I think he heard us talking about bluegrass on a previous episode. Uh-huh. So he sent us an autographed <laughs> copy <laughs> that's, that's of uh, Homestretch by Gary Brewer and the Kentucky Ramblers, yeah. which I've heard the Kentucky Ramblers before, and they're actually a fantastic bluegrass band. Nice. So that's kind of cool. Check that out. Very cool. Uh, then he heard that we were... Uh, uh, Alf fans? That's wild. Oh, yeah. So <laughs> there's this Alf. I'll let you describe him. Okay, this Alf is a, ooh. Is that, oh, that's, wow. What year is it? This is a 1988 Alf toy right there. Uh-huh. Seems like a, he's pretty squishy. He's a, kind of about 12 inches tall, pretty stuffed. Has almost a Hawaiian shirt on, right? Right. Yeah. There, there's that one. Yeah. Then there's this Alf. <laughs> Well, I think he's in his uh, Mel Mac. Yeah. Uh, the, the cat baseball, right? Cat baseball uniform. Yeah. The Mel Mac Orbiters. <laughs> this is amazing. Where'd they get this stuff? And then, uh, <laughs> then there's this Alf. We have a, wow. <laughs> wow. Cooking with Alf, he has a, like a French chef mustache with the chef hat and the apron that says cooking with Alf. Right. This is amazing. Yeah. These are all from, yeah, 1988. And so, you know, wow. it's it's a bit of a trip from Kentucky to here. Yeah. It took a few days. Yeah. So he packed a little bag for Alf. Oh, nice. You know, it says Alf for the trip. What's in there? And then when I opened the, what's in the bag? What's in the bag? <laughs> little cat. Oh, nice. For some snacks. Yeah, for, here. for Alf. That's amazing. Wow. This is the best package we've ever received. Wow. I guess this is Lucky the Cat. Yeah. Brent, very nice. Thank you, we buddy. Appreciate that. That's amazing. That is so cool. It's so like, much stuff. It's like Christmas in April. I, like I know. This. Wow. Uh, my wife saw the box. She goes, "Were you expecting a package?" And I was like, "I was expecting something, <laughs> not a box that size." We have to keep this uh, Kentucky exclusive Mad Ball in the studio, though. That is pretty awesome. That's awesome. I got to tell you, that's pretty fantastic. It's pretty scary with the boo and all that too. So, uh, Brent, <laughs> thank you so much. Definitely go <laughs> check out uh, the Broken Token podcast yeah. available on iTunes, Stitcher Radio. Uh, the Google Play Store. Find them on Twitter, and uh, we were and on the, the what past two episodes. They we had, were on they, the past two episodes. They busted up the the Friday and Saturday night recordings at the Louisville Arcade Expo. We're on there those nights, along with many other great oh, guests yeah, yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It wasn't just us. <laughs> no, no, no. And, and I, yeah, I, I mean, we had some fun. <laughs> we had some fun on that show. <laughs> and uh, should I even say the first the first night on Friday, I was kind of, I was a little. Little drinky. Well, I just almost got in a fight with the twelve year old. You did, so. and he knocked over my drink, and I was mad about that. <laughs> I was I was dinging the, the mic stand with my hand because I was trying to reach over and scratch my neck. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I can't wait to see those guys. I guess the next time we'll see them is uh, Grand Ole Game Room Expo, right? This I, fall, I may go to Southern Fried this year. You thinking? I definitely want. Are to. they going? Are they going though? I think so. I'm pretty sure. Oh, okay. I think uh, I think Whitney will have his uh, the. the uh, other game out there, the skipper. Oh yes, he is right? taking a skipper. Yeah. And I'm telling you, if Brent or Whitney do panels mm-hmm. at Southern Fried Game Room oh, yeah. Expo coming up very soon in June yeah. uh, in Atlanta, it's it's definitely worth going to see. Imagine a college seminar you would actually enjoy being at. Think about that. That's exactly what their panels are like. Yeah. It's it's so educational. Like mm-hmm. anytime we do a panel, it's like, hey, let's hey, make some jokes. You like Batman? Yeah. How about that Batman? They like build stuff for their panels. <laughs> yeah. It's amazing. You like circuits? A little bit different. <laughs> yeah. <slightly laughs> different. Uh, but yeah, wow. thank you for that fantastic yeah. care package. Man. That definitely makes Brent oh, yeah. the SOB OTW. So we continue the podcast role anthology of our favorite movie characters. We did the 1970s. We did the 1980s, and next, the 1990s. Hey everyone, this amazing ESO Network show is brought to you by our fine sponsor, Amazon.com. Please remember to shop Amazon for all your geeky needs, no matter what time of the year it is. All you need to do is go to esopodcast.com slash esoamazon. 
or click on the Amazon banner on the ESO Network webpage to go to our e-store. It's the best way to shop and the best way to support this program, and it doesn't cost you anything extra. Okay, that's enough of me babbling for now. Now on with your regular scheduled show. Ezekiel 25, 17. The path of the righteous man is beset on all sides by the inequities of the selfish and the tyranny of evil men. Blessed is he who in the name of charity and goodwill shepherds the weak through the valley of darkness, for he is truly his brother's keeper and the finder of lost children. And I will strike down upon thee with great vengeance and furious anger those who attempt to poison and destroy my brothers. And you will know my name is the Lord when I lay my vengeance upon thee. Uh, In doing this, Adam, uh, I came to the conclusion that the 90s was just a fantastic time in filmmaking. Oh, yeah. So many uh, huge, uh, fantastic <laughs> characters from 1990s films. And doing this, I do agree that the 80s and 90s specifically were the strongest uh, the characters written. And I think, as we'll talk about soon... I don't know, the 70s had some pretty strong characters. I, oh, of course, yeah, for yeah. sure. Had, had some rock in there. You can't beat that. <laughs> but I think this is the pinnacle here. And as we'll talk about soon, maybe it may just be my opinion, but I think the 2000s and 2010s, had a slow but steady decline down. We'll talk about that in a bit. But I think here is the the swan song of the original character in movies, and we're we're losing that today. It it is definitely a high point for independent filmmakers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and especially with Merrimax, uh, you know, kind of coming to the forefront and putting yeah. some of these independent movies that you might see in thirteen theaters ten years before in you know mass production, basically, and Pulp Fiction is a prime example of that. Uh, you know, I picked Jules as my favorite character. Same here, yeah. I don't know if he was... He was, yeah. He is my favorite character from the movie. I mean, monologues alone. Listen to that. But every one of those characters is great. Oh, yeah. Smartly written, own personality, interesting dialogue. Uh, this brought back John Travolta. Oh, yeah, without Pulp a doubt. Pulp Fiction basically was the rebirth of John Travolta. Mm. And then he went and made Broken Arrow. <laughs> and then uh, Battlefield Earth. Battlefield Earth. <laughs> yes, classics like that. <laughs> um, and Uma Thurman is great in yeah. that movie. Everybody's great in yeah. that movie. Even Ving Rhames has some acting chops in this one. Th- that's true. It's tough to do. Yeah. Oh, Christopher Walken? <laughs> yeah. Bruce Willis? Yeah. But I, I do say Jules is my favorite character. He's the best, yeah. I mean, everyone, you think of that movie, you think of him and those those sideburns, those chops and that, that gun and just speaking the scripture. <laughs> I, and if it hadn't been so long, I actually wanted to play the entire Brett scene. Oh, yeah. Like the say what again. Yeah. And, what does uh, Marcellus Wallace look yeah. like to you? I mean, all <laughs> <Yeah>. of that. <laughs> Drinking the, uh, the the soda and the burger and all uh, that. Yeah. That is a tasty burger. <laughs> yeah. I think this movie kind of made Samuel L. Jackson, too. Yeah, oh, yeah. I mean, he he was he was known before this movie. But nothing at that but, level yet. Right. This took him to astronomical levels. Right, yeah. Uh, who'd be next on your list? Uh, I've got to say, the first time I saw this movie, this character comes from, I despised it. Uh, but upon second viewing, it became one of my top five movies of all time. And that is from Fight Club. You can't deny the importance of Tyler Durden in 1990s cinema. You can't deny it. An entire generation pumping gas, waiting tables, slaves with white collars. Advertising has us chasing cars and clothes, working jobs we hate so we can buy shit we don't need. We're the middle children of history, man. No purpose or place. We have no great war, no great depression. Our great war is a spiritual war. Our great depression is our lives. Man. The 1990s was definitely the, a decade for Brad Pitt. Yeah. And uh, this, uh, I agree with you, this was on my list. Oh, what a, again, what a fantastically written character. Yeah, without this a doubt. Tyler Durden. The 90s had this, This uh, these strong characters... With well thought out, well done, just amazing monologues. I mean, stuff like that. You could sit back and hear Brad Pitt as Tyler Durden speak all day. And and he, that's one monologue from yeah, the movie. Yeah, but every single one, you're like, yeah. You just uh-huh. kind of put your your head in your hands and, yeah, yeah, you're right. 
I'm yeah. Not, I'm not in my damn khakis. We do, we do need a little bit of anarchy. My, my radio edit there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, make it burn. Go to your happy place with a penguin. Now let's beat up meatloaf. Yeah. Break a few eggs with an omelet, see? <laughs> <laughs> but I love the character. I love the movie. Uh, once again, all multiple characters from there with meatloaf and Robert Paulson and even Angel Face with uh, Jared Leto. They're all great characters, but you can't deny that Tyler Durden stands out as top of the top. Yeah, I, again, th- this kind of did for Brad Pitt what Pulp Fiction did for Sam Jackson. Yeah. It just kind of took him to a different place because you hadn't seen Brad Pitt mm-hmm. like this. He was knew. a pretty boy, and he was the hunk and the, the yeah. heartthrob. And, what, was the, uh, what was the period piece that he was in? Legends of the Fall. Legends of the Fall. Yeah, yeah. Which I liked Legends of the Fall, but I didn't yeah. like it as much as most right. liked it. But he's always that kind of character. Even Interview with the Vampire. He was a vampire, sure, but he was... Sexy and long hair and, and sultry. <laughs> right. But even yeah. here's he's he's an anarchist. Yeah. Yeah. And uh yeah. Without and without Fight Club, you wouldn't get the website, what would Tyler Durden do? Exactly. Is that still around? <laughs> I think so. It's been a while, but I think it's still going. Uh I forgot about that play. Wow. Yeah, you forgot about that forgot site. The site yeah. Yeah. What would Tyler Durden? That's do? funny. Mm. <laughs> uh, yeah, I totally agree with you. Yeah. Uh, Brad Pitt as Tyler Durden from Fight Club, one of my favorite characters from the 1990s. Here's an obvious one, and I'm pretty sure these are going to be on your list. Yeah, this is like a two for one. What's that? Uh, I'm going to go with Jay and Silent Bob. Ah, yes, they are. Uh, Kevin Smith and Jason Mewes from Clerks. Not the focus of Clerks, right? But these background characters that really grab your attention whenever they're on the screen and ended up being iconic film characters like Kevin Smith, not like Kevin Smith. You can't deny that Jay and silent Bob are iconic film characters right. uh, that will be in a movie in the next year or two. Exactly. They've had action figures, comic books, animated features, all of this uh, just kind of centered around those two characters. And yeah. they're, I think they're timeless. I think even that's the one thing I think as time goes on, it sounds stupid, but I think in 20, 30 years, we see a remake with the Jay and Silent Bob characters. It will happen. Do you not know what's happening? No. Uh, since Clerks 3 fell apart. I know he has that movie where they're trying to remake that, and they're going to stop that, right? The, yeah, it's going to be Jay, yeah. Jay and Silent Bob rebooted. Right, yeah. Where the plot is they find out that they're going to reboot Jay yeah. and Silent Bob, yeah. and exactly like you said. But I think it'll actually happen. Like, oh, with, like for real. <laughs> like with different actors. Yeah, yeah. I think in, in decades, 10, 20 years from now, that will happen for real. So you don't think that these are just iconic characters that kind of came from the nineties. These are strong enough to see 30, 40 years in the well, future. I'm not taking that away from them. I love them. I think you love them, but I'm saying even characters like from chips can be remade 30 years. Down uh, you know, yeah. Something like that. Yeah. <laughs> Did anybody go see chips? I don't think so. No, nope. deservedly. So Hollywood learn your lesson. <laughs> Please do. Uh, yes, definitely. If I'm, if I'm talking about, you know, it's weird too, because the nineties is kind of, you know, when I hit, that you know you're out of high school and you're in that young adult years, so a lot of these characters, like I love, I, I think because of when I was first exposed to them at that age, and that could be why I love Jane Silent Bob so much. Could be why I love Clerks so much. I think Clerks was the first movie I watched that I could actually relate to. Yeah, and I Agreed. couldn't relate to Jane Silent Bob so much, but I could definitely relate to Dante. Yeah, in general. Yeah, yeah. Uh, maybe not Randall, but but Dante. Yeah. And uh, was that your favorite uh, early Kevin Smith movie, Clerks? Yes, really? I remember the first time I saw Clerks was at um, it was off campus, and it was this second run theater where you could go and see movies for like three dollars. Mm. And so Clerks had already been out and it had its run, and I saw it probably a year after its release, probably at the second run theater uh-huh. for you know just a few bucks. And when I was like, ah, oh, this Clerks, I've kind of heard about it. Because, you know, it's not like you're, I wasn't scoping the internet for right. news every day. Oh, this black and white feature. i got to check this one out. And uh, <laughs> yeah, went to see no, Clerks yeah. and fell in love with it. Yeah. Definitely on my list. Jane Silent Bob. Nice. Next. Oh, yeah. that I, See, I was so into those characters. I thought they were mine. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, you know, I'm a big fan of, of Johnny Depp. I think he's a great actor, and he has a whole big list of characters he can do. But I think uh, this one may just be on mine specifically, because I'm a huge John Waters fan as well. And one of my favorite characters of his is Crybaby. I love the character of Crybaby so very much. I think he uh, portrayed that character perfectly. I love when that movie is set, the, the timepiece. I love the rockabilly feel to it. Just the uh, the rebels versus the preppy kids. 
And I really think that the movie deserved a sequel or two and never got its due justice. Uh, Johnny Depp is on my list. Love Crybaby. Not for Crybaby. I do have more Johnny Depp, but I thought I would get Crybaby out of the way. Yeah. Uh, I, I can watch that movie all day, every day. Up until this day, I can do it. It's interesting it. that that film affected you so oh, much. I don't know why. As a kid, yeah, I just loved it. Loved it. Um, loved it. Uh, Johnny Depp's on my list for uh, Ed Wood. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about that. As Ed Wood. I forgot about that. Uh, well. But it just shows the, I think it shows the the different um, aspects of a character that Johnny Depp could find and yeah. play. And we'll even get into that in the 2000s. Yeah. But I feel like in the 2000s, he... He landed on one character and refuses to go away. Exactly, from it. that's the problem. But yeah. every single role he had in the '90s was totally different. Totally different, and and that I think that's a good dichotomy right there yeah. to go from Crybaby to Ed Wood. Yeah, can and, I? And then yeah. throw Edward Scissorhands somewhere. That, in the that middle. was my next one. I was going to talk about. Yeah, yeah. I love Edward Scissorhands and yeah. that role. I mean, his acting isn't so great. He's kind of just there, mm-hmm. to be honest. But just his physical features and it's an iconic role. Yeah, that's what and, it is. And what's eating Gilbert Grape? Yeah, yeah. Um. So yeah. So Johnny Depp, first time mentioned. Yeah. You for Crybaby, right? Me for Ed Wood. Yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, I'll go ahead and skip Edward Scissorhands because we did, we did talk about him. He's on the list. He's good, a great character. Uh, so I'm going to stick with kind of in the Johnny Depp vein because you said Gilbert Grape was fantastic and a great role. But I think the person who stole that movie was was Arnie Grape, played by Leo DiCaprio. Man, mm-hmm. when you watch that, especially as young as DiCaprio was at that point. That's uh, one of the best acting jobs I've ever seen in my life to this day. Yeah, you're it's, right. It's insane. You're right. I mean, the physicality, the, the emotions that he draws acting that character, it's crazy. Yeah. And so Arnie Grape is a great character that only Leonardo DiCaprio could play, I think. You're absolutely right. Yeah. I can't argue with that. Yeah. Fear, uh, Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Another Johnny Depp movie. Right. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry to go back to Depp. But, like, all these characters just started to pop into my oh, yeah. head of these, the this, 90s this wide decade. spectrum yeah. of what he could do. But you're absolutely right about Leonardo DiCaprio. Mm-hmm. Another actor. Like, Titanic's not on my list. No, you know. Because, honestly, yeah, it's time. is Jack that memorable of a character? No. He just kind of, there. like, he's there. Yeah. But as far as acting goes, watching him play Arnie Grape was insane, but man. But watch him as Arnie Grape. Watch him as, not to, to show my hand a little bit, but... Mm-hmm. Watch him in uh, Catch Me If You Can. Mm-hmm. Watch him in The Aviator as Howard Hughes. Yeah. Uh, uh, watch him in Shutter Island. Oh, yeah. Uh, or The Departed. Even his portrayal of Romeo and Romeo and Juliet. It was fantastic for that story. Yeah. Like it or not, his portrayal of that was awesome. Yeah. Well, yeah. Leo's legit. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I can't he argue is. with yeah. that. Uh, let's see. I'm going to go a little more predictable route on mine. And we, I didn't, I purposefully didn't include this character in the 1980s. Mm-hmm. Because I feel like in the 1990s is when we really got to know the character of Terminator uh, in uh, Terminator 2 Judgment Day, oh, yeah. uh, portrayed by Arnold Schwarzenegger. The t 1000s highest probability for success now will be to copy Sarah Connor and to wait for you to make contact with her. Great. What happens to her? Typically, the subject being copied is terminated. Did he have any lines in the first movie that I can remember? Well, there's uh, a few. Yeah, when he first comes in and kills... Uh... What's his name? Paxson. Yeah. Bill Paxson. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He had a few, not too many, though. Yeah. I need your boots. Yeah. <laughs> your bike. Yeah, but you're right. The, the character did flourish and blossom like a big old blooming onion in part two. Um, Terminator <laughs> 2, one of the uh, best movies of the 90s. I'd stay with that, yeah. And, and it was early. It was 90 or 91. 91, yeah, I think. Yeah, I think 91 because I saw it New Year's Eve, I believe, of 91 while eating nachos. Uh, and... <laughs> I hate to say this, Uh because I know you're a fan, that is the absolute peak of Arnold's career. Ah. Because think of Arnold after that. He did the, I know he did the comedies. I know Kindergarten Cop was after that. No, I think that was before that. I thought it was like 89, right? Was Kindergarten Cop 89? Almost positive. Kindergarten Cop 89. But I I agree. This is the top of his top, the best of his best. Yeah, it never got better than uh, The Terminator and Terminator 2. I agree. Uh, even in uh, Terminator Genesis, Ooh. which I've seen. Have you seen that? Mm-mm. I finally watched it. I still that. didn't see Salvation. I, I hated 3 so badly I wouldn't go back and see more. Um, I will say this. Yeah. Terminator Genesis, not as bad as it was made out to be. Really? I don't like what they did with the franchise in that movie. Uh, and I can't wait for James, James Cameron to come in and just... Because I guess he is going to come in and produce the next one that is going to be the third movie after Terminator. It's so confusing. 
It will be the officially the third movie after Terminator 2. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, nice. So, going the old Texas Chainsaw Massacre style. Right. I like, like that. If he had his hands on it, it's yeah. legit. If he didn't, then it's not. Even though it had Arnold in it, and it was called the Terminator movie. I don't know. Wow. This is getting ridiculous. Because they've had the, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre timeline. You know how that goes? You have Texas Chainsaw 1, then 10 years later you have Part 2, then you have Part 3 called Leatherface. Yeah. And then uh, 15 years later we have the first remake, then you have a prequel to that remake, and then the third one after that line of, of remake prequels is called Texas 3D, and that's the actual part two takes place right after part one. <laughs> it is so... Same idea as that, right? It is so inter- interesting how savvy film goers are today that they can do that. And understand it. And know that, oh, everybody's going to be with us. Yeah. It, it's like in the, the superhero stuff. All right, we had Spider-Man with Tobey Maguire, and then... We had Spider-Man with Andrew Garfield. Mm-hmm. This is all within a 15-year period. Yeah. And then, well, we scrap that. We're going to do Spider-Man <laughs> with... Um, uh, oh, man. Forgot his name. Ah, I can't do it. Nope. But uh, the Spider-Man that's coming out. Yeah. Spider-Man Home. Yeah, yeah. Now we have that. And we're all just like, okay, we get it. We know. Yeah. Even though we, we clearly remember all those other movies, we understand they're not connected. Even though now he leaves this, he's going to leave the MCU after this movie, and we, we saw the news, we're sad, and we understand it. Yep. One and done. Which is, I think, a bad idea. I, I don't think that will happen. Really? You think they'll see the money this brings in, like, oh, we should stick here? Yep. Why, just, why would you not? Well, I'd like to see the percentage on that. I mean, if they, I mean, you know, throwing random numbers out there, if they make $750 million off of this, they've got to split it halfway with Marvel. They're pulling three seventy five a piece, but they could go on their own with Sony and make five hundred by themselves. See what I'm saying? They but could it's be not thinking guaranteed. That. They could be thinking that route. Whereas if and that's what eight years in the future now we're talking because yeah. they got to do three more Spider Man movies. After, no, two more after this one. Mm-hmm. Is oh, it, is there, I thought it was one and done. No, it's not one and done. Oh, really? Oh, wow. I thought yeah. that. No, there's three Spider Man movies. Ah, I thought this was after Homecoming and they're done. They're back to Sony. No, oh, wow. I, not, that's not what I, I what I understood. And obviously, I'm not good at reading things online with, with the Omaze thing. <laughs> uh, is that you've got the three films? Nice, okay. And then after that, it goes back to Sony. Okay, that makes me feel better. That's why they're already prepping for a Venom film. Well, see, I thought that was not. I thought that was a Sony movie. But Spider Man's not in it, right? Huh? Yeah, it's not connected. Interesting. It's just Venom. Yeah, that's a bad idea. Yeah, without Spider Man. <laughs> so it's weird. About, let's have a bizarre movie, but no Superman. Let's uh, do that. But yeah, apparently Cameron's going to come back in and uh, take back the reins of Terminator and do another Terminator movie. That'll be nice. No word if Arnold Schwarzenegger will be in it. He's, he has to be. He has to be. Mm, he has to be. No, Pop the Terminator wasn't uh, <laughs> wasn't that impressive, whatever they called him. Yeah. Pappy. The old Paps Terminator. I'm going to go a little more Paps, comedic. Paps <laughs> comedic. <laughs> On my next choice here. We've been kind of serious and cool and monologues. Let's try on the good 1990s comedy. And you know one of my favorite comedic actors of the 90s? Can I guess? Yeah. Billy Madison. Uh, that's on there later. But uh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> you want to go with Billy Madison now? No, 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 no. Okay. Tell me what you're going to do. Uh, I'm actually going to go for Ace Ventura. I'm a huge Jim Carrey fan. You can't deny, after leaving In Living Color, that Ace Ventura is a classic. To this day, we go to any comic convention, you're going to see an Ace Ventura cosplay. And and well, deservedly so. I want to see Tone Loke cosplayers from Ace Ventura. <laughs> I want to see a Tone Loke blank check cosplayer. It's the same <laughs> character, right? Pretty, yeah, pretty much. much. Uh, but I think it's a fantastic character. I mean, you can't watch that movie and not laugh. Looking back now, 25 years later, yeah, it, it's cool to not like it, but whenever Ace Ventura came out, that was talk of the town. I'll never forget it. Uh, I'll stand by it. Ace it, Ventura was huge. Yeah. Uh, I saw the first Ace Ventura. I didn't hate it. Yeah. I didn't hate it. Much. <laughs> I absolutely hated the sequel. I love When Nature Calls. No. I thought it was hilarious. Nope. Like a glove. <laughs> That's for the first one. But he says in the second one, too, and he flips the Jeep over and lands in the parking space. Oh. <laughs> yeah. That's oh, so good. Plus, Dan Marino's in the first one. Yeah. <laughs> Snowflake the Dolphin. It's all good. Wait, is it, Don, is out. Is it Don Shula in the first yeah, one? Yeah, all the, all the all Dolphins the, people. All, the yeah. dolphins. <laughs> all your favorite Dolphins from the but late that, 80s, early 90s. I think Tour is a classic comedic character, and uh, maybe, you know, just one of, maybe one of the best... Cinematic, comedic characters of all time. I'll stand by it. As uh, far as comedy goes, he's pretty up there. Uh, it was huge. Yeah. How about that? Yeah. It was huge. Huge. I'll give you that. Yeah. Um, here's something that we've never talked about on this show. Uh, Independence Day. Oh, yeah. Uh, my uh, next favorite ki- movie character from the 1990s is uh, Captain Stephen Hiller, played by Will Smith. Ah! Ah! That's right! That's right! Get up! Get up! That's what you get! <laughs> Look at you! Shippo, bang up! 
Who's the man? Huh? Who's the man? Wait till I get another plane. I'm lining all your friends up right beside you. Where you at, huh? Huh? Where you at? Welcome to Earth. This was a great movie character. Even though the argument can be made, it's just Will Smith. That's true. I'll give you that. I can stand by that. But I loved that just Will Smith character he was in great. that movie. Well, Will Smith is a great actor, and even when he's being himself, I believe he's great as well. Mm-hmm. Good guy all around. Uh, and another guy that's ma- obviously matured in age. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but th- to, to look at Will Smith in the early days, like Independence Day and Bad Boys, and then go back and look at Will Smith in something a little more recent, maybe not after Earth, uh, but go with I Am Legend. <laughs> right, yeah. And and see how the chops have progressed. Yeah. Even seven pa- Have you seen Seven Pounds? Oh, Seven Man. Pounds is fantastic. That's a, that's a jerker. The Pursuit of Happiness? Yeah. All those are good. Like, I don't cry during movies. Yeah. I almost cried during movies. <laughs> it almost movies. happened? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'll stick with your, your Will Smith hand of cards, and I'll uh, I'll double down on some Agent J from Men in Black. Oh. <laughs> you know I'm a Batman in Black guy. You know that. Black suit's coming, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Nod your head. <laughs> and I'm not the world's, it's kind of known by now, I'm not the world's biggest Tommy Lee Jones fan or a Rip Torn fan either. So let's go for <laughs> Agent J. <laughs> uh, I thought it was, once again, it's probably just Will Smith being Will Smith, kind of the same character as that from uh, from Independence Day, but I thought it was it worked well. And that's when he was on his hot streak. Yeah. Independence Day. Like every summer it was like, bam, 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 bam. Wild, 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 wild West. West. <laughs> kind of, uh, you know. Two out of three ain't bad, as Meatloaf says. Uh, I enjoyed uh, Men in Black immensely. Yeah. That was one of the movies that I didn't think I would like the first time I went to see mm-hmm. it. I'm like, I don't know. Yeah. I don't, I, I I love don't it. know, man. To this day, I love it. And it was great. It holds up. And I love this, the, the franchise and the series, but oddly enough, I still have not seen part three. I still haven't. Really? Yeah. With Josh Brolin. Never saw it. It's actually really good. Really, I, I need to. I thought Men in Black 3 was better than the second one. Really? I'll be honest with you. I need to, uh, I'll Which tell you about right, it. because it's got Rosario Dawson in it, and I love Rosario Dawson. I had to rent that from, the, from the library. I went to the library today and rented some movies. I'll tell you about it later. <laughs> they have movie rentals at the library now. Do you need some help? I think so. <laughs> Do we need to talk after the show? <laughs> Do you know that the library rents movies? Yeah. It's like, I walked in there, I'm like, wow, it's like an old blockbuster. This is awesome. <laughs> I'm browsing through, I mean, there are there rows and rows of them. It was great. And you got Men in Black 2? No, I, I saw Men in Black 3 there. Uh, you should get it. I should want to rent it. You, I think you'll actually like it. I need to see it. Because, like I said, yeah, I thought it was better than the second one. So I rented RoboCop. I felt that was kind of weird. Did you enjoy it? No, the, the classic. I've, you know, I just wanted to see it again. Oh, okay. I thought it would be take me back to the old school to rent RoboCop from the, RoboCop from the library. <laughs> I rented a RoboCop. <laughs> Oh, yeah. no, the late night recording. <laughs> Uh, so, yeah, Agent J from Men in Black deserves to be on the list, uh, right, right after Ace Ventura. I'm going to go with a character that I guarantee is not on your list. Okay. Uh, played by John Malkovich, the 1996 classic Con Air, and uh, his character's name was Cyrus the Virus. <laughs> That's clever! my daddy for the first time ever on July 14th. Make a move and the bunny gets it. <laughs> put the bunny. Down. Yeah, put the bunny down. <laughs> oh, I should let it play Jeez, to that. What are you thinking? What are you thinking? Put the bunny. Oh no, he doesn't say it to Cyrus there. That's true. It's later he says on. it when the guys in the in the cargo bay going through yeah. going through his stuff. Oh, put man. the bunny down. A good character, John Malkovich always is fantastic. But the movie, I, I never, never got out of the movie. Really, that I whole thought it was a lot of fun. Uh, Nicholas Cage, yeah. it's a fun Jerry Brockheimer. It's, it's a, romp. He's or did a, Michael Bay direct that? Direct that? I think it was Michael Bay. I think, I think it was Mike. I think Jerry Brockheimer produced it. Michael Bay directed. Ah, uh, what a what a combo! <laughs> well, had, happened a lot in the nineties. <laughs> but Nick Cage is a he's a tough sell for me. I won't lie. Uh, he's um, unless he's marrying someone in Vegas or becoming a vampire in his teenage years. I'm usually not down for him. Or searching for a snuff film. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> in the shady underground of L.A. Yeah, yeah. Or, um, yeah, playing uh, Charlie Kaufman. I should have put that on my list later on. Did you ever see that adaptation? Oh, yes. Amazing movie. That is good. Yeah. Or in Raising Arizona. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. I should have put that on my 80s list. Oh, yeah. Him and Holly Hunter are great in that movie. Yeah, we, I don't And John Goodman. We don't have much Coen Brothers at all so far, do oh, we? Oh, but wait. 
teaser time. <laughs> There's a lot of Cohen. Well, you know what? Uh, we do yours, and then I'll I'll do. I'll, I'll throw some Cohen brothers your way. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna get one more stupid, goofy comedy character out of the way. Can we do that? Mm-hmm. And nothing made me laugh more in the mid '90s uh, than a classic scene of a family around the dinner table. Uh, just trading back flagellants left and right. I was in the floor. Is this the clumps? It is the clumps. But I love Sherman Clump. He's a very, to me, a relatable character. Before, <laughs> before Buddy Love, Sherman. It's a, it's a Sherman Clump Buddy Love combo. You don't like the, you like Nutty Professor. No, I don't. At the time, that was no. one of the funniest movies ever made. No, at the, at, 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 at the time it was. No, it wasn't. The world loved the clumps. What year was that? Ninety six. I want to say. Ninety six. Yeah, I'm gonna guess ninety six. Trying to think of a funnier movie that was out. Oh, uh, Con Air was a funnier movie than Clumps. <laughs> The mask came out there. I almost put the mask. I almost put Stanley Ipkiss on there. I would have, you know what? I almost what? put Lloyd Christmas from Dumb and Dumber on I there. I would have respected <laughs> Stanley Ipkiss. Really? I love the mask. Yeah, it's a great movie. But I, more I so Jim than Sherry was really, really good in that. Yeah? yeah. But more so than Sherman Eddie Clark. Murphy, not so much. <laughs> not a Murphy fan? I love Eddie Murphy. Hey, look, kids, a falling star. <laughs> <laughs> I'll never come on our show now. I'll never be here. <laughs> Poor Charlie Murphy. <laughs> I know. Uh, but I'll stand by Sherman I Clump. hate you, 2016. <laughs> the, uh, uh, the Clumps, the sequel to Nutty Professor, not so much, but the original, best of the best, and 96 comedies. I don't know, man. Uh, 96 comedies. I mean, how about, ver- I'll give versatile. Hercu- like, to this day. How about if, versatile? To this day, if someone starts choking, I'm, I'm screaming, Hercules, Hercules, to them every time. Hercules. Really? Hercules. I, every, it's funny. That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> For the longest time, before I saw uh, The Nutty Professor, mm-hmm. which has been uh, in the last 15, 16 years, I guess. Yeah. Uh, I that thought may that, be why. Uh, that, that may be why. You weren't there for the moment. No, I didn't go see it when it was. You had to be there for the moment. I, and you, I wouldn't like it's it. It's like listening to Woodstock music now. Is Janet like, Jackson in that one? Where's my dubstep in my Woodstock? <laughs> it's like that. It's the same thing as that. You know what this needs? <laughs> Screw you, Crosby, Stills, and Nash, and the and the Doors. Yeah. This needs some Skrillex up in Screw this. Screw you, Cocker. You need some dubs, some wub wubs. <laughs> Did you say Cochran or Cocker? Cocker. <laughs> Joe Cocker. Yeah, yeah. What would you do <laughs> if I sing in tune? Wub, wub, wub. <laughs> womp, 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 womp. Whoa. Any... Uh, Final thoughts? Are you, are you molting? I think <laughs> something's happening. The oh. chair is breaking as we speak. Oh, well, that happens. Uh, but yeah, the, the clumps deserve to be on the list. The greatest characters of all time. Uh, how about some Coen Brothers love? <laughs> Give it to me. The Big Lebowski. Yes. Oh, yeah, that is on my list. I, was, I forgot about that. The Dude? The Dude is on there. The Dude is on yours. I know what you want, though. But Walter is on mine. Over the line! <laughs> huh? I'm sorry, Smokey. You were over the line. That's a foul. Bullshit. Mark at eight, dude. Uh, excuse me. Market zero, next frame. Bullshit, Walter. Market eight, dude. Smokey, this is not nom. This is bowling. There are rules. Hey, Walter, come on. It's just, hey, man, it's Smokey. So his toe slipped over a little, you know? It's just a game, man. This is a league game. This determines who enters the next round robin. Am I wrong? <laughs> when will the world <laughs> recognize the genius of John Goodman? It's, uh, he's always the, uh, the greatest supporting actor of all time. He's good in everything. Yeah. Yeah. Even as Fred Flintstone, no, he's enjoyable to watch. That's true. That's true. And it doesn't get any better than Walter and the Big Lebowski. <laughs> a great role. I can't deny that. If, if you want to, if you want to laugh a lot and kill about, <laughs> I don't know, fifteen minutes, go look at the YouTube montages of, of Donnie and Walter and the Big Lebowski. <laughs> they're, they're classic. They're still funny to this day. You're out of your league, man. <laughs> uh I don't know what else I can say other than John Goodman is genius and Walter is one of my favorite characters. Hopefully everyone has seen that movie by now. If not, they need to. This ain't numb. (laughs) I'm drinking my coffee. I'm going to go a little more more philosophical here. The first DVD I ever saw in my life was uh, 1999, The Matrix, when that came out. And the character of Neo, I think, changed movies forever. For, for better or for worse, it happened. I agree with you. And the idea of that, that Matrix movie, the Matrix trilogy, even though the sequels weren't as good as the original, I'll say that. But Neo, the character to this day, is uh, phenomenal and, and very memorable. So Whoa. Neo deserves to be on there because he knows Kung Fu. <laughs> <laughs> I love Neo so much. And I think, uh, I, think, uh, I think Keanu Reeves is a great actor. doesn't get enough credit for what he is. Uh, what the Wachowski brothers are, I guess, sisters, now. The sisters now, now right? the Wachowskis. Yeah. Uh, what they were able to do um, with just... To, to take genre filmmaking and kind of turn it on its head with special effects, which only people like Steven Spielberg and George Lucas mm-hmm. had done before them, and bring in Keanu Reeves to create a modern 
hero that is everlasting. Yeah. And uh, I absolutely agree with you. Uh, Neo was on my list. Um, I would also, you know, give a shout shout out to Lawrence Fishburne. Yeah. Cowboy Curtis needs some love. He does. <laughs> <laughs> Morpheus is good. But Morpheus. Uh, but it is Neo's story. This is one of those where I'm going to go with you. Yeah. It's Neo's story. Yeah. Oh, and the um, the bad guy. Oh, the, the the main bad guy. Oh, Agent Smith. Agent Smith. Yeah. That's a great villain, oh, too. Oh, yeah, yeah. Faux show. Sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, next on my list, I'll make this real quick so we can uh, get through a lot of these. Uh, I'm just going to say uh, historical film, sort of. Yeah. And Oliver Stone's JFK. Oh, yeah, right. Uh, but Gary Oldman is Lee Harvey Oswald is one of the most fantastic historical portrayals I've ever seen in a movie. I think along with the Leo DiCaprio and a Johnny Depp, Gary Oldman is one of those actors, especially in the 90s. Every single role is totally different mm-hmm. and just award-winning, worthy. Yeah. He's fantastic. Uh, yeah, if you've never seen JFK, find it at mm-hmm. your local library. Yeah, local library. You can find it there. I'm Actually, I, I did see that today. I remember seeing it. You should I'm watch serious. JFK again. <laughs> I think I may do that. Uh, I can't forget on this list one of my favorite movies of all time. It's an epic. Uh, it goes through many decades from child hood to uh, to adulthood and that's uh, Tom Hanks and Forrest Gump. I mean, who doesn't know and love this movie? The soundtrack alone is enough to love it for it, but uh, just Forrest Gump is is amazing. Hello. My name's Forrest, Forrest Gump. Would you like a chocolate? Oh, thank you. It's funny what a young man recollects. You're the same as everybody else. You are no different. Your boys different. Are you stupid or something? I'm as stupid as a stupid does. I'm Jenny. I'm Forrest, Forrest Gump. She was my most special friend. My only friend. We was together all the time. We were like peas and carrots, Jenny and I. Run, Forrest! Hey, stupid! Run! Now, you wouldn't believe it if I told you, but I can run like the wind blows. Who in the hell is that? And that there's Forrest Gump, coach. Just a local idiot. I never thought it would take me anywhere. They even put me on a thing called the All-America Team. Well, you get to meet the President of the United States. Congratulations. How does it feel to be an All-American? I gotta pay. <laughs> I believe he said he had to go pee. I didn't mean to play that long of a clip from Forrest Gump. I didn't realize it was over a minute long. Uh, it deserves it. But it, it, you know what? It's just a testament to, as you said... How much of an epic that film yeah, actually like is. Yeah, I said from childhood to late adulthood, every single facet of his life, I mean, made up or not, it's a great story. This was part of Tom Hanks' I'm going to win an Oscar, or oh, at yeah. least get nominated every year, yeah. run Pretty through the much. 1990s. I was researching this this list this week. I thought about this role specifically. Do you think this was written for him, or are there audition tapes out there of Kevin Costner and people like that playing the role of Forrest Gump? Christopher I mean, really, Walken. Can you think of anyone else even attempting that? No. I, it's one of those things I think that may have been written for him. I just can't imagine anyone in the world auditioning for that and just flopping terribly, and Tom Hanks comes in and kills it. I don't know. Or is it what Tom Hanks was able to bring to that character that made Forrest so endearing? Because if you read the book, Forrest Gump is not that likable. Really? Yeah. Interesting. He's not, and Ginny is not likable at all. Uh, She wasn't likable to me in the movie. I'm I'm a Ginny hater. I'll admit it. Uh, She uses my man. (laughs) Yeah, kind of. And she's got the clap or something. (laughs) Got something bad. Something's going on down there. <laughs> something's happening. There's something <laughs> happening. <laughs> what it is exactly. Clear. But you uh, you laugh at the movie, you cry at the movie, you uh, you feel for him. It's it's amazing. I mean, from it's, start to finish, one of the best movies. I mean, not in my favorite necessarily. I love it, but I'd say one of the best movies ever made, start to finish. I think Forrest Gump is one of those films because it's kind of a period piece. Mm-hmm. Um, that no matter when it is. Now we're 20 years removed, 30, 40, 50 years removed. This is going to be one of those movies that you can go back and watch and enjoy. No matter how old Tom Hanks gets, Mm -hmm. this is just, um, this is what's his name's best movie ever, Robert Zemeckis. Oh, yeah. Oh, and, and oh, you're talking oh, to wow. you're talking to the guy that loves. You just said that. Back to the Future. You just said that. I mean, Back to the Future is my personal favorite film. But when you're talking about the quality of a movie, Mm -hmm. I don't think you can compare Back to the Future to Forrest Gump. Yeah. I don't know. Agreed. And, and I'm a fan. Yeah. So, uh, Adam, you're going to be very, uh, be very proud of me for my next pick. Okay. This is a movie that I did not think would make this list. It comes from the Phantom Menace. 
but Ewan McGregor is Obi Wan ah, Kenobi. Okay, okay, okay. Is one of my favorite characters from I the nineties. Think you would do that very well played. Yeah, you yeah. And, uh, talk about a character that you, you got to imagine when you get cast as Obi Wan Kenobi in a new Star Wars movie on the hills of Alec Guinness. I mean, there's got to be immense pressure. Oh yeah. And you and McGregor knocked it out of the park without a doubt. He's so believable as a young version of Alec Guinness. That the rumor is, once we get through this current current trilogy of Star Wars films, you're gonna see an Obi Wan standalone movie with you and McGregor as Obi Wan Kenobi. I would, I would love that. You that'd know, be, as, that'd be as, awesome. as, as like a middle aged middle age. Yeah, yeah. I would love that. So yeah, uh, I'm gonna give a in the '90s there. You had him as a uh, young Padawan as well, a Qui Gon Jinn. <sighs> Yeah, that's yeah, true. Yeah, but that's still, true. he was still stronger. Took out Darth Maul, and Qui Gon could not. Mm-hmm. Qui Gon's a jerk. <laughs> My least favorite on-screen Jedi of all time. I'll say it. Uh, Can you think Qui-Gon? of one worse? Yeah, I can't think of one worse. Uh, I don't know. I'm sure there's some in the palace. I used to be oh, a Mace Yoda. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> I used to be a Mace Windu hater, but learning more about him, I respect him. I like Mace Windu. I do now, but uh, he, man, yeah. Qui Gon. I've never been a Qui Gon guy. I've always known Samuel Jackson was a Jedi. <laughs> not a not a Qui Gon guy. I am. Uh, I'm gonna go with. Let's do a little more comedy, shall we? I think I'm comedy heavy, but I'll I'll space it out properly. And you you guessed earlier, Billy Madison. I do like the character of Billy Madison, but I'm a huge fan, even more so, of Happy Gilmore. And I think that character for me is my favorite '90s Adam Sandler movie. I could watch that one all day, every day. Again, it's one of those. Well, they're movies. interchangeable. Yeah, Billy yeah. Madison, Happy Gilmore. Yeah, Billy Madison's kind of a goof, kind of a. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's that classic Adam Sandler. Meow, 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 meow. Want to touch the honey? Meow, meow, meow. It's what? kind of He's more. A cat? <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like that. But but Happy Gilmore can actually speak. You know. He's not as stupid. Yeah. I think he's a little more funny. And you have the Apollo. The price is wrong, Bob. Exactly. And Apollo Creed's in there. I mean, come on. Uh, he gets his hand yeah. bitten off. Big chubs. Um, I, I just like the movie. It's fun to me. It's a good, good was watch. Was it the Water Boy in the 90s? Maybe so. Yeah, I think it was 90s. See, I would put the Water Boy as maybe my really? favorite Adam Sandler character really? from the 90s. I never, I never, it was good, but it didn't feel as much as Happy Gilmore. Yeah. Even his production company, Happy Madison. Come on. Well, it's his too. Oh, dude. You know, when <laughs> Billy Madison came out. Uh-huh. And then he followed that up with Happy Gilmore. The top of the world, right? Adam Sandler could do no wrong in the 90s. It's like the whole SNL thing. There's a, a small click. point in there where Mike Myers can do much wrong either. Yeah. For yeah. a couple of movies. Yeah. I think he would, if he brought back Austin Powers, it would still make a ton of money. Oh, yeah. I would, today. I would be there. Even a 50-year-old Austin Powers. Yeah. That was almost my list, but I took it off. Uh, I can't believe I didn't put that on my list. Uh, he was on there, but he's actually still on there right now. But I'm not going to see him. Oh, okay. Even though we kind of talked about him. Well, you can have Austin Powers, okay. but I'm officially making my next one uh-huh. Dr. Evil. Ah, okay. How did I miss that to write it down? How did you miss that? It's a good question. Dr. Evil. <laughs> I won't do the impression. Please don't. I won't. Much. Ah. Uh. <laughs> uh, yes, definitely. Dr. Evil is one of my favorite characters. Yeah, he's great. People know him. People love him. Uh, very memorable. Very mockable. Very uh, impressionable. And he just, he's progressed as the sequels went on. He and his son and his cat both did. All three of them did. Isn't that right, Mr. Uh, here we go. <laughs> uh, good choice. So, you know, we spoke of last week. Well, I'm taking the, Dr. Ian Malcolm off my list oh, to put no, Dr. No, Evil. No, 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 I'm not. I I'm thought not. you would love Malcolm. Yeah. Uh, we talked about last week quite a bit of uh, horror icons. We the 70s and 80s. We had Freddy Krueger, Jason Voorhees, Leatherface. And you know what I love? A good murder mystery story. So why not combine those two and give me a character like Ghostface from the Scream series where every single time, literally, it's a different person, but that iconic status, the, the physicality of the face, of the Ghostface killer, stands out to me. It's the a great mask character. is iconic. I know. but is that's the, the character, though? Ghost, yeah, Ghostface themselves is the the, the epitome And my favorite fear. rapper. <laughs> Ghostface killer? Ghostface killer. Yeah, yeah, but I love Ghostface. I, you're not a Scream fan? Even um, Scream, I love, I love Scream Four. The first one's really good. Yeah, and Jane Silent Bob's in one of them. Part three, it's pretty rough. Yeah, <laughs> three is the worst by far. Uh, I like the first one. Mm-hmm. Have you seen four yet? No, I haven't. Four is really good. I haven't seen it because it's in, in the actual like Facebook and, and cell phone age. Hayden Panettiere. Yeah, it makes That's it makes it feel good. A few years old now, isn't it? Yeah, three or four. Yeah, yeah. Uh, maybe, maybe I'll get around to seeing that. Do one. it. Go to your library. Uh, the next one on my list. Uh, here's a funny character. Uh, the genie from Aladdin. Where are you from? What's your name? Uh, uh, Aladdin. Aladdin! Hello, Aladdin. Nice to have you on the show. Can we call you Al? Or maybe just Din? Or how about Lottie? Sounds like, here, boy. Come on, Lottie. <laughs> I must have hit my head harder than I thought. Thank you for choosing Magic Carpet for all your travel needs. Don't stand until the rug has come to a complete stop. <laughs> 
Thank you. Goodbye now. Goodbye. Goodbye. Thank you. Uh, the greatest Disney animated character of all time. I would agree with that. He's Aladdin. a great one. Yeah. Robin Williams. Comedic. Uh, it was a lot of his stuff improv for that role. What do you think? Yeah. What was it? Yeah, it had yeah. to be. It had to be. Makes sense. Even in the songs, right? Yeah, maybe. I don't know. I mean, can you write a song? Okay, now we want you to do this impression while you do this lyric. I that don't can't know. happen. I'm not sure. Uh, <laughs> what a fantastic movie. Yeah. Different than any Disney animated character ever. It may be the first Disney animated movie to put a lot of pop culture references in it. That's true. Yeah. And I don't even think they do that now. Yeah. It may be the only one to do that. There's a uh, kind of a, not really a trivia, kind of a, a, a an opinion out there, like an urban legend. Is the genie, I've heard very big yeses and very big noes, is he supposed to be the actual embodiment of that vendor we see at the beginning of the movie? Do you know what I'm talking about? The very beginning you see a vendor looks like him, he's dressed that like Robin, a genie. That Robin yeah. Williams' voice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that supposed to be the same character, though? I've heard yes and no. I don't know. I don't know. Weird. When, uh, it's been a while since I've seen it. Does the vendor kind of set up the story? A little. He's, he's like the narrator at the beginning, but he stops narrating throughout the movie. Maybe it is. That's possible. Could be in an embodiment. Yeah. Do you ever see him again? No, I don't think so. Maybe. Who knows, huh? It's possible. Hey, before, uh, I'm just going to piggyback this character on yeah. there since we're talking about Disney. Mm-hmm. Uh, I also have Woody from Toy Story. Ah, nice, yeah. Uh, portrayed by Tom Hanks yeah. on my list. Uh, I just have two lo- two more. That's all I have here. I have, do you want to go Do you want to go happy? Or sad first. I thought he already did happy. Dude, I was gonna, oh. <laughs> In that case, I'll go not sad, but horrific. And I think you and I have, uh, we both love this character. We love different versions of the character. And I am obsessed and love the early 90s version of Buffy the Vampire Slayer, the Christian Swanson version in that movie. Uh, I love that yeah. Buffy. That's mm-hmm. my Buffy. Um, Hashtag, that's my Buffy. SMG all day. <laughs> I would uh, watch that movie. I would come home from school every day in the early 90s and watch that back-to-back on VHS. I would rent that movie. I would I would keep it overdue and keep the fees and pay the fees. And finally, I bought it. I love that character. I don't know what it is about it. Even before I knew what a period was, I would chant for her to have her menstrual pains during her her, uh, her fighting times. Uh, well, uh, <laughs> just because of what it gave us uh, later in the nineties, yeah, that was had to be like ninety or ninety one. I, right? I want to say ninety two. I think really, I think so. Yeah, ninety two, and then by ninety six, it was the series. I think so. Uh, for what it gave us, mm-hmm. uh, I will I will uh, applaud that. There we go on your list. Well, because so without just, that movie, just say Buffy, Buffy in general, the character, there would be no you know TV show. The character Buffy, Buffy. <laughs> with Sarah Michelle Gellar. Yeah. Um, <laughs> next on my list, uh, this is the last one I have a clip for, so I'll do it now. Um, Tommy DeVito, which is Joe Pesci's character from Goodfellas, a movie you've never seen. It's just you know, you, it's you're just funny. It's, it's you know the way you tell the story and everything. Funny how. I mean, what's funny about it? Tommy, no, you got it all wrong. He's... Oh, oh, Anthony. He's a big boy. He knows what he said. What'd you say? You're right. Funny how? Just... What? Just, you know, you're, you're funny. <laughs> you mean, let me understand this, because I don't, you know, maybe it's me, I'm a little fucked up, maybe. But I'm funny how? I mean, funny like I'm a clown, I amuse you. I make you laugh. I'm here to fucking amuse you. What do you mean funny? Funny how? How am I funny? If you've never seen Goodfellas like Adam, yeah. uh, go rent that at your local I, library. I know that, that line, though. I've heard that quote a thousand times. <laughs> Do I make you laugh? <laughs> Am I a clown to you? Uh, the essential Joe Pesci character. Ah, I'm a... <laughs> Gone I'm... fishing? <laughs> I, uh, Home I, Alone? I, I like that character, but I think his better role is in Home Alone, which is where my next character comes from. Not Harry Lime, the, the character that Joe Pesci plays, but, of course, Kevin McAllister by Macaulay Culkin. I mean, this is an iconic... Cinema character. People know, all you have to do is look in the mirror and just put your hands on your cheeks and scream, and someone's going to say, Oh, you're Kevin McAllister from Home Alone. Does Mr. Goodfella have any kind of thing like that that is iconic? I think not. Um, I'll let you, uh, yeah, I'm not going to argue. He's, <laughs> he's a pretty good character. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Those guys, him and Daniel Stern are both good in that. Yeah, movie. yeah. Here's my beef with Home Alone. Not a Home Alone fan? And this is only from a recent watching of Home Alone. Mm-hmm. How in the world did you expect. Any middle income family. I think they're more than middle income. To relate. That's what I'm getting to. Yeah. To relate to a family that clearly lives uh, in a half a million or half a million yeah. dollar house. Yeah. At least. And and it's just obviously this super rich family that they're flying to Paris for Christmas. <laughs> that is my big beef with Home Alone these days. I understand. It's fine. It's it's like he played Richie Rich twice in yeah. his career. And how do you? Macaulay Culkin I know did. it was like a busy morning and things happen, but how do you forget your kid? Like if I don't forget my. my she f- forgot him twice. I don't forget my phone at home. <laughs> I've never once left my phone at home ever. I never have. Never really? will. 
I think I've left my phone at it's home. It's a very once. important thing to me. So I can only imagine an actual living, breathing child of my own blood <laughs> wouldn't leave him behind. I'm just saying. <laughs> but definitely not twice. Flew off to Paris. Definitely not twice. Um, that's my final one. I'll give you. Uh, I'll go through a couple here. I bet there's one I almost put on there. I'm waiting for you to have it. You is have it Doctor Ian Malcolm? It is not, but I know you'll have him. Which is Jeff Goldblum from right, Jurassic Park. Right. I'll, I'll go through these quickly. Just say them. Uh, Doctor Hannibal Lecter. Uh, that's the one I thought. Yeah. Uh, from Silence of the Lambs. Mm-hmm. But to me, it's a tie because Jodie Foster is great in that movie too. Is Clarice? Clarice. Clarice. Um, yeah, man, do you like Silence of the Lambs? No, not at all. That's really? Why, that's why I put it on there. Yeah. He's a good character, and you know, spawned many sequels, but. That movie bores me to tears. What? It really does. I'm sorry. No. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, while we're on the creepy psychopath list, a uh-huh. uh, verbal from The Usual Suspects. Okay, yeah. It's portrayed by Kevin Spacey. Uh, have you seen that? Yeah, yeah. Uh, what a great little twist Kevin Spacey does mm-hmm. at the end of that movie. And uh, also, uh, John, Dovi- John Doe, which is Kevin Spacey from Seven. Mm-hmm. Uh, and also have Brad Pitt down. He's great in that movie, too. As you should. And, uh, you know, hey, I'll just close with this one. Uh, if I missed one, I'll, I'll put it on Twitter or something. Oh, what do I choose? Do it. Do them both. Do them both. Okay, Steve Buscemi from Fargo. Okay. Kathy Bates from Misery. I thought about her. And I'm going to stop. This is this is honestly where I'll stop. Wesley Snipes' is Blade. Uh, yes, pl- please stop there. <laughs> this, got it. this must end. Please end this. <laughs> Oh, wow. uh, did you not like Blade? Nah. So I've only I've only seen the first one when it first came out. Oh, I mean from the first one. I yeah. don't mean from anything yeah. past. And the I first wasn't. One. Uh, I wasn't. I don't know. I wasn't familiar with the character. I wasn't into. I just didn't feel it so much. It's been almost twenty years since I've seen that. Maybe you should give it another shot. But I think you would enjoy it now. Maybe so. Um, like I knew a, nothing, and still to this day know nothing about Blade. And it's the first like kind of serious. Well, not the first serious comic book movie, yeah. but I remember going to see that, and I was like, hey, well, comic book movies should be more like this. <laughs> there you go. And. Now we're there. And here we are. So uh, there we are. We're finished. Yeah. The uh, 1990s movie characters that we love so much. That was good and beefy. You think the 2000s and 2010s will be as lengthy as that? Um, well, what we're going to do is we're going to do it one episode. <laughs> right, yeah. So if that tells you anything. <laughs> exactly. As I, as I teased earlier, I think just the character, de- character development and writing of original characters has been on a steady decline the past 17 years. We'll talk about that. I agree with you, yeah. especially once you get to 2010 to now. Yeah, it's a rough one. I mean, we love rough. it. Some of my favorite movies and, and highest, you know, grossing movies of all time have come out in the past seven years. But but when, but like you said, when I was going through this, I'm like, oh, <laughs> yeah. what have we done? Yeah, what's going on here? What have we done? Yeah, yeah. Let us know who your favorite movie characters from the 1990s are. I'm sure we've forgotten some. Let us know on, on social media, on Twitter at Adam and JP. Facebook.com slash Adam and JP. And if you like this list so much, you want to give some money and keep it going, Patreon.com slash Podcast Rolls, where you go for that. Can we play the Thor trailer again? Yeah. It's, it's no, in, we don't oh, want to do it on the oh, show. Man, Should we? Nope. Uh, I'll just go watch it on YouTube. Yeah, do that. Uh, I'm Jay Patrick. That's Adam. Eat your Podcast Roll. This has been a production of the Adam and JP family of On Demand Talk Radio. AdamandJP.com Right now. Right now. This has been a broadcast of the ESO Network, your station for all things geek, classic, current, and beyond. Be part of the crew at ESONetwork.com.